Hello, good day, welcome. My name is Ian. And I'm Lauren. Together we are Bars and Bells. We will continue to train simple, stay strong, and meet new people like you and introduce you to the kettlebell. Tonight's class is the bell and body basics. Yep, all we need is our own body. A kettlebell might be okay. A light dumbbell would be appropriate as well. We are always focused on our tension and our technique and the heavy loads can come in the future. Mm -hmm. So let's warm up. Let's warm up. First, wrists. Could we take our hands, lace the fingers together, and do gentle wrist rolls for about eight to 10 in a single direction? Six. Keep the hands in the same position and alternate the direction. I'm right hand dominant. My right hand was driving that action in the first moment, and now it's my other side. Ooh. Let go. Could we do the same thing behind our back? Could we lace those fingers together? And without seeing it, could we try gentle wrist rolls? And again, think about one being the driver and one being the passenger. Switch your direction. So again, it's tough for my brain, particularly when you can't see it, but try to get that going a little bit as well. Hard. Check it out. Elbows. I'm going to extend my hips here to a tall kneeling position. And with my arms cramped, my triceps heavy, I'm going to karate chop in the upwards direction here a resisted biceps curl. At the top, I'll turn my palms to the face, cramp up elbows, biceps are the brake, and triceps are the gas or the drive to extend down. Repeat. Cramping up the triceps, flexing or bending on the elbow to a biceps curl. Turn the palms to face forward, cramp up biceps tension, extend the elbow against the bicep resistance, return to a fully flexed elbow at your safe tension level. Palms face each other, cramp up biceps, and extend the elbow to down. With our arms at our sides, we'll shrug, drive those armpits or shoulders forward, down, retract. Up, drive through, forward, down, retract. Twice more in the other direction, down or depress, drive forward, elevate, retract, drive down, roll forward, Elevate and retract, neutral. For one last movement at the shoulders, take one hand and place it again behind your back. Try to avoid it resting on your body. The other hand to the head. Take a moment, gently shrug the shoulders. Maybe they're already there. And again, now pull the armpits down to take the traps out of the ears. Extend through the elbows, pull, making sure we don't hit each other, pull through our teeth. Same thing, flex or bend on the elbows. The palm grazes the hair in the back. The back of the hand barely touches the bum. Shrug a shoulder. If they're already there, commit to wearing your shoulders low. One more time of each, extend through the elbow. Armpits stay down. Shoulder blades stay stable, touch, hover, extend, one more time, ribs are down, butt squeeze, arms to the side, and return, down. It's on you. All right, we were going to introduce our, what? We were show and tell. Oh, we're going to introduce our firing range position. So you'll need a kettlebell or a dumbbell. Get that out. Or a shoe. Good. Our firing range position is the first position we're in before we get into our get-up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to our bell. I'm going to assume you're gripping a bell or some, something with a handle. Come down to your side. Your shoulder's on the floor. Your head is not resting. Not resting. Your hips are stacked. This looks cool. I want to join. And I'm going to use my very light wood dumbbell here. Okay, take your hand up the arm that's on the floor. 
and put it through the handle of whatever you have. If it's a kettlebell, your thumb is on one side, your index finger is on the other, and it's resting in your palm. Close your grip around the center of the handle. Take your other hand, place it over top, like you're cuddling your other hand. With both hands, roll onto your back. Roll over, keep both knees bent, feet flat on the floor right now. Take the bell and with two of those hands, press it up. If you feel nice and stable and strong, remove that top hand and place that arm on the floor. If you don't, it could cuddle and spot the bell a little bit. As you're in this firing range position, the leg that with the free arm, so the leg you can freely touch, straighten that leg. Place that arm down on the floor at 45 degrees. We're in our first move of our get up position, but right now we're just continuing to hold this firing range. As I'm here, I'm making sure my wrist is straight. No broken wrists. You can imagine what that might look like. Keep your uh, elbow nice and straight and your wrist over top of your elbow and your elbow stacked over top of your shoulder. Your shoulder, like before, is pulled down into the side of your body, like in our warm up, like Ian said. Three, two, two hands. Other hand comes back to the bell. Pull your bell down, keeping your vertical forearm. Elbow will hit the floor first. Two hands, cuddle, let go. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Rule number 7,300 of kettlebells. There's a lot of them. There's there? a lot of rules. A lot of them. Number of rule. Do not ever bring the bell across your chest to switch sides. Because one day, you're going to be doing a get-up with 100 pounds, and when you bring that bell across your body, you'll crush It can yourself. move around the body. You so, can move around the bell. Exactly. Maneuver. Rotate that. Back, bottom hand, handle, top hand, cuddles, two hands, roll to your back, two-handed press. When you have stability in that shoulder, that wrist, that elbow, let go with that top hand, place it on the floor out at 45 from your body. That same leg you just moved, or the same leg as the arm you just moved, extend it out as well. You should be in your get-up position. Pack your shoulder. Look at your wrist. Is it straight? Straight means stacked, means there's no angle in it. Elbow, straight. Yes. Shoulder, packed. Yes. Hold. Spend time under this load. Before you ever do your weighted get up, you should be able to hold this kettlebell comfortably for at least 30 seconds. Three, two, two hands back to your bell. Engage lat, pull down, keeping that vertical forearm. Cuddle face down. Very nice. I agree. Okay. I agree. Bring yourself up into a lunge position. Go ahead. What's a lunge? A lunge. What Genuflection is a lunge? Genuflection lunge. We have approximately a 90 degree angle at the front knee and the same at the back. The back foot would be tucked under. A couple different things we always think about in this lunge position. One, with hips being level. Think of this as our suspension or hydraulic system, and we want to maintain and encourage these hips to be nice and level. Hike a hip, depress a hip or down, repeat for two more. Hike, down, hike, stay down. Now that the hips are level this way, Let's check a gentle back and forth action. Could we tuck or tilt a tailbone away and then tuck under the hip? Tilt the tailbone away in extension lumbar tilt and underneath. Repeat one more, tilt and extend through. As a challenge, can we take that front leg, stay nice and tight or narrow to the body, Return a leg underneath and switch. Ooh, little balance challenge and do the same thing on the other side. Tuck the back toe, hike a hip, lifting up, pulling down. When one body part does one thing, often the other side compensates or does something else. Check in with both. Don't stick it out too far. I know, I felt that. And then underneath. Now again, we'll tilt our punch forward, we're gonna spill a little bit of water out of our punch bowl here, or punch in a punch bowl. 
and then we're gonna level it under and stay nice and strong. Repeat two more, tilting your tailbone away, tucking under, tailbone away, and tucking under. Return the leg out front to underneath. Let's talk really quickly about a plank. Lauren was talking about the strong position for our wrists to be in, in our arm bar position. Firing range. Firing range. Stack knuckles on a stacked wrist on an elbow that on your back is also stacked into the shoulder. Let's challenge the wrist in extension and introduce you to our hard style plank. I'll go first, Lauren will cue. Excellent. To begin in your hard style plank, place your hands on the floor under your shoulders, fingers spread out wide. From here, pull your shoulders down in retraction, engaging your lats, good. Slightly push the floor away a little bit, not fully, but a little bit. Keeping your head nice and neutral. From here, let's not even go to our plank yet, but brace our abs by tucking our hips under. And from this all fours position, lift your knees one or two inches off the floor. This is our bear hold. Hold this. Feel that core right now for three, two, gentle down. Okay, we'll take it into a little bit of an extended position into our plank. So now you'll probably walk your feet back. You're gonna tuck both toes, lift both knees, lift your hips higher than you think. Now tuck under, connecting your ribs and hips, and lower into a plank position and hold. Right now, you're holding. If I put a bowl of water on your back, it wouldn't spill. It's also all in a nice straight line. Your butts are squeezed three, two, Thank you. easy <laughs> off. Good, that was only 10 seconds, just so you know. Whew. 10 to 20 seconds is the duration that we'll plank for here. We promise to not hold a plank for a minute. That being said, the tension techniques Lauren was trying to get us familiar with would really amplify the work. 10 to 20 seconds is probably all you need in a good plank. Mm -hmm. We'll go over more cues after. Yeah, let's do one more set of that firing range position again. So Lauren will carry us through the firing range, maintaining our stacked wrist on a packed shoulder, loading your body for the get up. All right. Kettlebell cuddle. You remembered that though, didn't you? Onto your I side. Love a good cuddle, yeah. Bottom hand grips the bell. Second hand cuddles. Two hands roll to your back. Two handed press. You're already in that get up position because you knew I was going to say that. When your top hand's ready, it goes out on the floor. 45 set, uh, sorry, 45 degrees angle. Pack your shoulder. Keep your elbow nice and straight. Straighten your wrist, hold that bell. Now, if you're watching this thinking, this get up, they keep talking about the get up and I don't know what it is. Don't you worry, we have get ups later today. As you're here, you're probably feeling that that kettlebell is digging into the back of your forearm. This is normal, get used to it. Hold three, two hands on the bell. Bell pulls down, vertical forearm, cuddle to your switch around. And just good habits here, Ian, don't, Pull that across your body. So even if it's light, practice the good habits that can prepare you for something more challenging. I, I do um, sympathize with this pain a little bit. but If you, it's that bone. If it's that bone and you have a giant uh, malleolus there, bone, I'll cut you some slack. Otherwise, typically clients um, are able to get heavier bells as over time. So they start with that 8 kg or that 6 kg bell and it hurts, but then it doesn't hurt anymore and they just build up next level kettlebell, next level. So don't go grabbing the 40 kilo bell first. That'll definitely hurt your arm. But if it's a bone feeling, you need to change that. Yes, and there's risk risk. Soft that. tissue. You have to deal with it. Affectionately toughen up. Grip your bell, cuddle. Two hands roll, two handed press, pack, stacked, get up position, hold. Again, about 20 seconds here. Look at your wrist, is it straight? Elbow, straight. And I always, shoulder, Yeah, packed. shoulder blade is monopolizing a lot of my energy here. So as I'm doing this, I, I told you elbow straight and my elbow's definitely straight. I wouldn't say though, it's 100% locked out. It has like a one percentage bend because that complete lockout actually doesn't feel great as I do it. Three, two, Two hands, bell pulls down, cuddles. Great distinction there too. 
You can lock out on ligaments, say like a horse does when it stands. Life we're not sleeps. we're not horses. We want to load muscle. So find those right angles that you're able to load your muscle with strength. Let's return to a lunge idea here. Oh, right. I lunge first. With our tall prayer position here, take a single leg and place it out front. Keeping the flashlights of the hips facing forward. Still got it, still got it. Place this leg out to the side between on a clock face again, midnight and nine o'clock. From this position, mine is as nine o'clock as it gets. Hike a hip up and pull a hip low. Hike a hip up, pull a hip low. Repeat one more. I think this is where I belong, contrasted with say that position there. So check out what you feel strong in at home. Now we'll try that front back direction. So if we tilt our tailbone to the back and if we scoop under keeping the ribs down, that's a tough place. I saw Lauren's energy maybe peak up as we did that too. Tilt away, tucking under, staying tall through this balanced hip and repeat one more, tuck away, tuck under, Slowly heel toe that foot to the front. Familiarize with some tension in your lunge position. Pull the leg underneath of the hip. Repeat to the other side. To the front and open. Open, open, open. Hike a hip. Pull the hip low. Hike a hip. Pull a hip. I can hip and Lauren is going through my brain right now. Don't shoot your hip out to the side. That's a typical place to try to dump to. I got to fix that myself. And again, we're going to tilt our tilt, our hips back and then under towards the back underneath and repeat one more time to the back underneath or tall stacked. Place that leg to the front, pull, pull underneath and watch that wood dumbbell or in the worst case, a heavy dumbbell kettlebell behind you. Relax. Planks positions oh. on the ground. I'm gonna modify that position just for a break. We'll do our bear crawl hold first, create some tension in the hub, and then spend some extra time on our high plank. So when you say tension, that means making your muscles tight and creating work. Grip the floor, hands under your shoulders. Don't lift yet. There's a dot on the floor underneath your belly button. I want you to pull your knees and your hands towards that dot. Nothing moves. Just pull together. Elbows are straight. Lats are engaged. Pull. Three, two, easy off, but don't go anywhere. Just stop pulling. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start to pull, but our knees might lift in two. Start pulling. Knees lift. Keep attention. Everything's tight. It's just like yourself. Your abs are braced. You're breathing. Two. Easy down. Now we'll start planking. Ooh. Where are you down there? Those isometrics, super engaging. Build some time and tension with that. Yes, just as a quick modification to the high plank. If we feel that we're in between, this is kind of easy. My goodness, this is kind of hard. A modification we can make here is meeting halfway in the middle. Stay stacked, stay strong, create tension for five to ten seconds from this three or six. Five pointed plank here, relax, Ooh. and then switch. Hopefully, the hips stay high, they stay level, and it's almost so good that Lauren would want to do this too, maybe for five, four, Enjoy and relax. Take a moment, never be afraid to modify your exercises, regress for strength. From this position, let's do our first lunge up. Ooh. Lunge position would be here and in a lunge. Quick question about our lunge. Which leg does the most work initially? Both, perhaps. What do you think? My back leg. The back leg. We're going to initiate the drive through that back leg to get tall. Cool. I was reading. More, get, watch it. More on lunges in a second. Until lunges, let's hinge. Hinges. Because everybody, when they see a bell, they just want to swing. Swing it. But you can't swing a bell until you can hinge. Hinge first. <laughs> so, using the wall, I'll be doing the more beginner versions of our hinges again. Hip creases, 
I'm going to push my bum back, trying to find a wall, extend through. Lauren's going to have a target or a kettlebell, and she'll be replicating the same hinge. Take it away. With your bell or a wall or nothing, place your feet on the floor. About mine for me is slightly wider than my hips. I now just know my stance. Slightly wider than my hips, it varies a bit than my squat stance. I want you to take your hands, make them into knives. Take your pinkies and slice your hip creases where your underwear would be and chop your hips back. Thinking, as I'm pushing my hips back, my spine is nice and straight, like there's a rod going through it and there would be no bend in that rod. Look slightly down. Are my shins perpendicular to the floor? So that means they should be vertical. Are my toes still gripping the floor and my arch is activated? I should feel work and load in my hamstrings and glutes as you're hanging out in this position. Now take that work load from your glutes, let that slingshot go and bring your hips up and through. I like to think of a hinge like a slingshot. We load up the hips and we shoot them back through. Do you have a question? I have a question. Where should I be feeling that? Your hamstrings, like I said, and your What butt. if I feel that in my low back? You didn't have a rod in your spine and your abs brace. Let's do it again. Here's your rod. Put it through your head and put it all the way down your spine. It comes out your tailbone, okay? That rod does not bend. Brace your abs like, uh, like you could take a punch. Yeah. Take your hands and your knives. Keep your punch abs. Keep your spine long. Chop your hips back. Don't bend your rod. Shins should be vertical. Abs should be braced. I could punch you here as well. Feel load through your glutes and your butt. Those are the same thing. Your hamstring and your glutes. And then let this thing shot go. Whammo hips through. Stand up <clears throat> tall. Let's do it one more time. Rod, abs, chop, hinge, glute load up, hamstring load up. Inhale and boom. Hips through. We'll do, we'll do more. We'll do that again today. I was finding a pretty nice challenge there at the first, and then I got that going pretty well at the end. To add the challenge, step away from the wall, keep the shins vertical, and keep driving the hips back to the wall. If you are using that wall, though, make sure you don't, you're not falling back to hit the wall. Right. Toes stay heavy. Control and balance. If you feel okay with your hinge, the other grip hold that we like to share with you today is our suitcase hold. Do you want that one? I would prefer that one. Great. Whew, look at that quarter turn here. I'm gonna stand over top of the bell. Again, I have a beginner version and Lauren is a little bit more advanced with it out to the side. Let's take those hands on hips, chop, set up our hip hinge. I'm gonna take one hand on that kettlebell Pull my armpit in just like we did from the back's position, and with my hips, drive up. I'll return this kettlebell to the side, and for 15 more seconds, we're rooting our feet heavy, we're squeezing our buttocks, bracing our core, and feeling secure with this bell. Hold it for five, four, perhaps two hands on the kettlebell, returning to center, hinging on the hips, Returning the kettlebell low, body weight or bare handed back up. Repeat on the other side. Straddling the kettlebell, slightly easier. Off to the side, a little more challenging. Set up your hip hinge, other arm on, assist with the other if we need. Brace the core, pull straight up. Change your base of support as you need. And brace and core challenges here with heavy feet rooted in the floor. Wait, even in both feet. Squeezing the butts, crushing the grip, and for five more seconds, holding in your suitcase hold. Two hands on the kettlebell, return to the ground using your hinge, and bare hand it up. One more quick set, maximum five repetitions of our kettlebell hip hinge. Okay. I'm going to load my hinge, meaning I'm going to pick up the bell. I'm not going to swing. I'm going to pick it up. Feet on either side of my bell or you're chopping your hips to the wall. Stand up tall. Rod and spine every time. That was a good rhyme. I like it. Chop your hips. Vertical shins. 
Grip your bell. If you're lifting with me, grip your bell, pack your shoulders, inhale, brace, up, one unit. Hinge, keep that tension on the way down, core brace, full dead weight on the floor. Pack, inhale, up, tall. Hinge, brace abs on the down too. Who pack, remembers that plank inhale, position? Hup, that plank, plank position we talked about in that warm up. We're using that core brace for stability and strength. I hope you haven't broken your rod. I hope not Up either. Upwards out. <sighs> Great. And relax. So a deadlift, that bell should be passing in a vertical line. Vertical line. Up, down line. All right. Excellent. One more time. If your grip strength is okay after lifting your load, if you did Lauren's exercise there, let's repeat last time of our kettlebell hold today in our suitcase hold. Let's. Hip hinge, grab the bell, pack the shoulders, extend up with tension, make some slight adjustments, and for 20 seconds or 15 seconds more, heavy feet, weight through both, both of them, boots cramping, ribs bracing, breathing for three, two, one or two hands, replicate your hinge and body weight up. Doesn't matter if we are using, we'll switch sides one last time. Doesn't matter if you're lifting in a body weight example or with a kettlebell load or that armor stone in the garden. Use your hinge for strength. Always. Hinge, pack shoulder, pick up, tall, cramp, brace, breathe, grip strength, core strength, and confidence for three. Two, hip hinge down, and bare hand it up. I think we all know the game Simon says from when we were a kid. And for our last movement today, we like to share with you our get up variation. We'll do one, rep one repetition going down and up. <laughs> oh, use that hinge. Exhibit Lauren, beautiful hinge. Squats are okay too. We'll get into squats the next time maybe that we get together. Squats, hinges, hinges, squats, thank you very much. The get up. The get up. I'll tell us the first time down, and then maybe Lauren will give a little less cues or she can put her own spin on it for the second time. Ian side. says. Ian says, or in this case, the get up says, take a single hand and place it across your chest. The side that your hand just touched on, that leg could step down into a lunge. The leg in the front opens up to the side, Rotate your upper body to look the direction of your knee. Hinge on that hip and place a hand on the floor. Load as to stack over the wrist. Take the back leg and sweep it through. Find an elbow. Push off with our core brace. Returning to the floor. Oh, look, we're in our firing range. We're in our firing range. If you feel confident with your arm extended, let's do that. I'll keep it bent or across my chest. Perhaps in that firing range, keep your knuckles to the ceiling and push through a hip and pull on an arm. Tall sit, bridge, sweeping a leg, hinging and sweeping through, legs to the front in our square lunge position and drive through to the top. Last moon of the day, let's let Lauren take it away here. Let's just review here. Uh, get up is normally done holding your kettlebell and is typically done from lying to standing to lying again. But right now, we'll take our bell, we'll press it, hup, hup, hup. leg you can touch, step back lunge. I'll guide you down less work on the up. Front foot opens. Hand chops, rotates, hand finds floor. Chip weight over, load up. Sweep to your elbow, strong, proud shoulder. Push away from that elbow to your back. Pack shoulder, use your foot to push into the floor. Roll, pull on elbow. Next, from here, a lift and leave. Both legs, pull your bell down, 
toss it off to the side. Get that's rid a, of if it. that's an imaginary kettlebell, maybe we can just shoot jump shots with it. We're doing the real thing. You haven't seen my imaginary basketball oh, game. I don't need to see it. I see your real basketball game. <laughs> I like it. 21 or horse, I'm in. Thanks for horsing around with us, but as well, take it nice and seriously Taking in our pursuit business. of some strength. Thank you for joining. We'll be back on Wednesdays with our beginner kettlebell and body weight yeah. strength skills. Thank you for joining. We will train simple. We will stay strong, and we look forward to seeing you in class. Thank you.